Greetings and salutations, everyone. Hello and welcome to Gamer's Ledge. It is Mutants and Masterminds, Secrets and Lies in the MCU, Episode 3, Rise of the Surfer. And I am one of your hosts, Mark, but I'm actually a player, the man in charge of this insanity. And our game is, of course, Daniel. Hi, Daniel. Hi, folks. Um, I'm going to be blurry and not blurry. My camera is one of those... Uh once it tries to autocorrect for me so as i move it's going to keep trying to find me um welcome uh this is obviously the role-playing um game that takes place in the mcu that was a dragon eating someone's head um in the mcu uh that takes place after the infamous snap that erased half of the life in the universe however end game and works a little bit differently in this universe and we're playing out what happened in the meantime um with us we have three players um i'm gonna go ahead and start with mark uh if you can tell us your name who you're playing um and it'll go mark ray and we'll finish off with justin that's that's a super weird effect that my camera's doing with the green screen. that's a that's a weird name for your character but okay uh, I'm, I'm silver surfer I'm uh, Norrin Rad. He was uh, uh, recruited by Galactus in exchange for sparing his world. Um, if he would f seek out new life and new civilization for him to nom 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 across the galaxy. He did that for a long time, but then eventually tore away. Uh, but then the snapping occurred and it made things worse. And um, he came to try and help defeat Thanos before the snapping, but he did not make it in time. And when he did make it here, he found that there's a scroll um, armada around uh, the solar system for Earth. And he fell to Earth, uh, and Professor X found him, and he has been depowered. But he, he, or he's much weaker than he normally is, and he's been helping the, uh, um, the mutants try and navigate their way through the world uh, and let Earth know of this issue. Also... Mr. J. Nice, thanks for subscribing eight months in a row. You are Rockstar. Hi, I'm Ray. I will be playing Cadis. He is a Gambit offshoot. Pretty much the same attitude, same style. Less on the charisma and effects. I think you're up, Justin. I'm sorry. It literally sounds like two clowns are fornicating next door. That's um, an interesting visual. Yeah, it's the horn squeaking. It, it's it's very interesting sounding. Um, I am playing Surge, a speedster who originally I was playing it as kind of wants to be innocuous in, in the crowd, but that hasn't really come up in the story as much, so he's just kind of a a speedster who is the support for the team. I mean, really, he's a speedster, so you you you're the only speedster here, and you run a lot of the normal speedster things, um, scouting and doing a lot of things, and tests. And you're especially great at running away, by the way. Yeah. Uh, okay. Awesome. Um, awesome. Awesome. Um, let's go. Uh, J um, Justin. Yeah, you've been here for the last games. Justin, why don't you catch us up on everything since the vignette with the Fantastic Four? So, I guess I got to try to remember if this was pre or post. So, with the Fantastic Four, we did the. Are we talking? Is this post World Police? No. So, um, the very thing, the very, uh, the game after Fantastic Four was, um, started with broadband. Uh, the kid who could broadcast, um, information and found the assassination attempt. And so the kid, yeah, broadband found the assassination attempt and we found that we were notified that there was an even more exclusive school for the gifted that Xavier had helped set up. We're, we're actually going back even further than that because yeah, so, um, Ray, Ray hasn't played in the one where... Go ahead, Mark. 
yeah. So so short answer, Ray, is basically what happened is that um, there was a kid. He he took almost took out a good chunk of Xavier's school accidentally. We also deter- discovered at that exact point in time that Xavier was missing. He was abducted, and that there was an at- going to be an attempt by uh, basically a mutant liberation front on Senator Kelly's life. Now, some people would have thought that we would have actually acted upon that and tried to stop that assassination attempt ourselves, but the smart folks that make up this team realized that we had access to a communication device for a neutral third party being the Wakandan government and that they would probably take the the uh, uh, threat on the senator's life more credibly if it came from a neutral third party source rather than the mutants that Senator Kelly hated. And so that's what the smart uh, mutants and alien did, um, much to the chagrin of some people. And then um, after that, then we found out that Magnet- uh, uh, Eric Lenschner has another school in the Savage Land, and it looked like perhaps that maybe there was something sinister there in that they were sending these kids away and never heard from them again. But it turned out it's actually a really good place and really nice place. <coughs> Excuse me. And um, and things were going super fine until something happened with Silver Surfer and the Power Cosmic. And somehow, well, basically... Uh, the mutant, one of the mutants that, that Surge and, um, yeah, Aeon. I, I think you should let, uh, let, let Justin explain that part. Okay, he's, he's, he, he was the one doing the yes, interview. he was there. He was there. Go ahead. So, I'm totally going to forget Nick's character right now. Um, Aeon. 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 Aeon, he's, he's Aeon and flux. I were interviewing a mutant who has the ability to have extreme heat. I guess would be the best way to describe it. He he is like the Fantastic Four guy who I am not going to get the name Sunspot? of. Sunspot. Sunspot. <laughs> which which is X Men, but still, he's there like Sunspot, is. except that he burns and he doesn't heal. So it's not like the fire is external to him; it is a part of him. Um, what ended up happening was at that moment he collapsed and started. An explosion had happened, and he collapsed and started dying, and Aeon, taking some of the power that he had in him, used some of the cosmic, I guess would you say, is his, his realm of power, cosmic power? Uh, yeah. Aeon, Aeon actually just pushed himself. Yeah. Aeon, pu- Aeon literally pushed himself to the brink of his powers and to try to bring the this um, boy back from, from the dead. The dead. Rogers. And try to bring back Rogers. Rogers, yep. Yeah. Uh, so we tried to bring back Rogers and succeeded? Asterisk? Question mark, um, He made conscious the body that was Rogers, but the body that was Rogers now used and has the same power that Aeon has, or the same type of power that Aeon has, and I want to say went on a rampage, but got loose. And with those powers, if not controlled, is not going to be good and it's going to cause a lot of issues. So Aeon had to basically take a breather. He, Because he pushed himself to exhaustion, he had no choice but to start siphoning the life force from those around him. And that was not even like a no choice, like, well, you know, you had to. It was purely, I need to breathe. And the only way for him to breathe was to siphon. So he's recovering at the moment right now. And we're still trying to track down what happened to Rogers, why the explosion happened in the first place, and what information we can also find about where Professor Xavier is. Well, and and while they were interviewing him, uh, Silver Surfer and um, who went with me? Uh, blindfold. Blindfold. Silver Surfer and Blindfold. We're actually tracking down. Um, Surfer's powers are weird in this place, and he can't use his tracking sense or any of that stuff. But he did sense the power cosmic, 
like the stuff that's inside him and what gives him his energy in this place from a couple different places. And we found that number one, it's in the batteries that are running the monorails. But <clears throat> number two, when the explosion happened with Rogers, we detected it and we ran down there real quick on the, on the board. And then a, um, someone coated in the cosmic skin, the same way surfer is descended down female form on fire. Um, but gold instead of silver. Yes, but gold instead of silver at the very end, and it's no one. Most that I people recognize. call that person more, more famous and or better looking, more powerful, and, and always better than the Silver Surfer. Um, much to one person's chagrin, but. And, and then I put Surfer. I, I put Surge on my board and shot him up, straight up. And it, actually, that's not true. I did that with with Aeon. I think Aeon right now, if I remember right, is a hundred feet above all the rest of us on the board so that he's not leeching everyone. Yes. And that is correct. That's where we left it. Yep. No question, no question. Ray. That makes complete, that makes complete sense. sense. All right. So let me see if I can get this uh, in like summary form. So there's a group, the mutant liberation front or a mill for short, that's trying to plot and destroy everyone. And we let the Wakandans know. And then a bunch of shit went down. Aeon stuff, pretty stuff much went uh, around. Stuff, stuff went down. And yeah, yeah, uh, bad, bad, one of our guys bad, is like dead, go. dying, but he's in the air, 100 feet off the ground. So he doesn't siphon life with everyone. And game on. Kind of, yeah. Uh, so, family show. So, watch those uh, watch those adult words. Um, but yeah, that is that is an accurate statement. So, as we um, drop back into it, um, you uh, blindfold is a pardon the pun, but examining the scene of this large explosion that happened. Rogers owned a bakery, um, and so the bakery is what exploded. Uh, when the zombie Rogers stood up, it was he was bleeding, and from his eyes, he was bleeding off energy that was kind of white, black energy with little black dots in it, which is very similar to the cosmic energy that the Silver Surfer uses. Um, just as a reminder, uh, as as it ended, um, the sun was behind this female gold chrome form um, hovering down uh, towards the group. Um, as the sun was behind her, um, originally, this, uh, the surfer did not recognize her, but as she goes past that light um, and hovers about three feet off the ground, uh, you absolutely, or Silver Surfer absolutely recognizes her. And the fiery visage that she shows full of anger, which I will, I will note was a, um, a viewer add-in. The fact, the fact that you recognize her as a viewer added. Wow, that's oh, crazy. crazy. Look at those viewers helping us out. Awesome, thanks for the save, whoever that was. <clears throat> the... Yeah, so wow. uh, who be that, man? It looks like you. Only prettier. Hey Ray, I think my audio is coming off of the speakers. Everybody's possibly. audio is going out, coming out of his, his speakers. <laughs> and into your mic. <laughs> I'm not sure how. <laughs> it's because his output's not set through his headsets. Okay. Um. All right. Uh. So, uh, the anger and almost hatred. Oh, and um, Cadis isn't there yet. Just you know. Um, he didn't. He he didn't fly out with this group to Genosha yet. <clears throat> Thumbs up. Okay. Cool. Cool. Awesome. Uh, you go ahead. And so I I look at her and I say Nova. <laughs> Frankie. I, I'm doing some research to make sure that that's not a nickname. And the troll well, Frank, is just been Frankie Ray is her full name. No, it's not. <laughs> oh, her eyes go wide, 
and she blasts you with full force cosmic energy into the bakery. That poor bakery, man. What is the energy, doing? the energy flowing around you I is catch him. white hot. As it gets warm and I get really warm, I don't catch him. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, ah. Mm. <laughs> and as the energy touches your skin, um, you note that it loses that chrome for a couple seconds before before shining back up. Like as if there was a cloudy day, mm -hmm. and then it kind of goes, after you stand up, it goes clear again. You recognize now that is definitely not Nova. That is Shalabal, who was the empress of your home planet. Yeah, I got that. Okay. Uh, that's definitely not what I was expecting. All right. You broke your what you broke you your contract, so he came after me. I understand. I will submit to whatever judgment or punishment you see. There is only there is only one punishment since he's already eaten our world and that's for you to watch him eat every world afterwards. And there's a sense of dread that washes over you because that him or everybody he, him specifically um because he understands the true um devastation that that could cause uh and also knows that since half of the life has been removed from the universe it means that galactus has to eat more planets in order to sate his hunger and that statement means he's probably headed in this directly in this in this direction Top down, like lore question. Galactus, I'm assuming we would have asked this of him if we would have known, but is he ever really full? I feel like that's one of those things like you gotta, you know, keep helping me get food until I'm full. Like, is there, it just seems like one of those you're always gonna be hungry. So, this is just, uh, you know, help me devour everything in the living everywhere. Hmm. Well, Surfer had been had been steering him towards barren planets that he could get his sustenance on, but it meant that he had to do more of them. So now Galactus probably doesn't have to eat as much, but he's not, he's not being picky is my, is the point. So he's not half of the living things that got taken away. No. Um, so the, of the planets that he eats, is he eating for sustenance the core and the heat? And the okay, I, I don't I don't want to be a dick, but this is really a question that you could ask in character. Yeah, well, this is what I am asking him. <laughs> okay, yeah. So you have I don't know actually. Did you was Galactus one of the things that you showed to everyone in your no. visions? No, not okay. At all. Then when you, when she said that, Serge. Um, you're not entirely yeah. sure who who she's talking about or what she's talking about. Well, I mean, we've heard of the thing coming to eat. He's mentioned that there's something coming for the Earth, right? Oh. He mentioned that the scroll invasion. Yeah. Yeah, because I was not sure that Galactus was... I'm sure Galactus will get here sooner or later, but he was not, like, making a beeline for Earth or anything when I left. Okay, so I've got my top above board knowledge that I was okay. okay. Uh Surfer begins to uh just blatantly cry and drops to his knees because he just found out that his planet and his love are dead. And that's it. One second. Cool.
because I think I'm getting... I am getting people mixed up because you had to get confusing for me. Because I have her as the lover of Nuran Rad. Yeah, Shalabal is. Okay. Okay. Good. Um. <clears throat> and and I will re the only thing Surfer does is reach out a hand towards her. And if she touches it or accepts it, then I will transfer everything that's happened between like whenever the last time I saw yeah I thought you were saying that Shalabal was not my lover in this instance and she was instead oh no no so uh, in this it says that she is the empress of the planet Zenla yeah and the lover of Nuren Rad yeah okay okay I thought you yeah. were deviating, deviating there no no. The only way I'm deviating is that she is now... Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Which, the funny part is that she has part of Surfer's power in the real books, too. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, anyways, um, yeah, that's the only thing I'll do is if she so takes it, I'll transfer... She, she hovers down, and her fingertips are hot, like solar radiation, the sun hot, as they touch your flesh... And you start to pass memories to her, and then note that that's not all she's taking. As the shininess of that power mm -hmm. starts pulling off of you, okay. and you are left in, as kind of a, as a dark okay. metal humanoid. Okay. Can you but? No, I said okay. Okay. Um, also, in the trade-off, you see that she arrived here um, and has been building things behind the scenes for a while. Like, longer than you would have expected. Okay. And that when passing through the system, she didn't notice the scroll uh, invasion force at all. At all, at all. And she should have. So they were either hiding from her and not from you, or you're not entirely sure. Maybe they were not, uh, more afraid of her than they were of you. This is one of the things that I am in just overwhelmingly guilty of. So whatever, I, you know, whatever she does, I'm I'm not going to fight it. Okay. Um, she says, you and all of these pets, they mean nothing to him, and they will fall just like our people. I think you're wrong, but I'm not going to attempt to stop you, do what you believe is right, just as I did. She turns and looks over her shoulder one last time and you can see like magma energy tears running down her face as she looks over her shoulder and then flies slowly at first up into the up into the atmosphere and off into the sky you currently have zero powers your stats are still the same your abilities are still the same but you currently have zero powers so what you're saying is aeon's dead yeah, as he comes flying yep. to the ground. No, <laughs> yep. Yep. no, your la 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 la. <laughs> so your surf your surfboard slowly comes to the ground and sets itself on the ground. It's no longer hovering, and it's more of like um like that dark that that cobalt metal color, and it's just laying on the ground. Um, it is a heavy piece of metal now. And you see that Aeon's unconscious form is laying on top of it. And I'm assuming I cannot reabsorb it into my body? Nope. Okay. Um, it's about this time that emergency services shows up. Uh, you can see that there are um, 
a bunch of mutants that are very good at this specific thing. Um, and, uh, like, ones that control water, ones that suck the air out of the, um, out of the building to reduce the fire, and you note that Blindfold is nowhere to be seen. He, he had been investigating the building behind you, but you don't even see him anymore. Um, uh, about, after all of the fire is gone, and all of the smoke has settled, um, the, they come over to check on you and check on you guys and take, um, reports, interviews, that kind of stuff, um, to see, make sure you were all, that you are okay and that everything is working fine. As soon as they get to me, I tell them that they need to go after the thing that was Rogers. Uh, what? <clears throat> there was a entity that was using alien-like power. It's not quite undead, not quite unlo- alive, and it ran that way. And I... It went to the sewers. He looks like Rogers the Baker. Um, don't be fooled. He's not Rogers the Baker. Do you remember how it got away from you, Serge? He evaded all of our attacks, even my super speed, my super um, punches, and even uh, Blindfold's attacks. He just escaped. He was unnaturally dodgy dodgy yeah and into the wait. Stores and started taking off in the direction we went to go down but we couldn't uh, navigate well enough to make it he more efficient he actually squeezed through a much smaller area than you could like yeah he, he kind of terminator 2 didn't he kind of yeah yeah where he kind of like, yeah, he shoved himself through a smaller area. I'm trying to think of the best way to put it. <clears throat> like a mouse, he compressed. Yep, like a mouse. That's a, that's the best way to put it. Like a mouse, he kind of compressed through the area. Uh, you also, um, around this time, um, as they are taking notes and sending people off to try to find hints of this type of energy source that you were mentioning, um, you, Eric Lencher... Um, floats down like the train goes by and Eric Lyncher floats down on a couple metal discs. He's dressed in the same politician's outfit. Um, it's very unique to Genosha, uh, but it's, very, it's for the tropical region, which is where they are. Um, and he says, are, are you okay? Speaking specifically to the Silver Surfer, because Surge looks like he's fine. He's not even sweating hard. Um, and he, Aeon, BC Dubs, was taken away, assuming that it was okay with you guys. He was taking, taken away in an ambulance to make sure he was checked out. Mm-hmm. Because these hospitals are specifically set up to help mutant kind. Um, he says, um, please, if you would come with me. And he lifts your surfboard using ma- his magnetism powers um, and puts down several other kind of manhole covers, but they're slightly larger than manhole covers, uh, for Surge. And looking around for Blindfold, sees that Blindfold's not there and um, indicates that you shouldn't come with him. I step on. I step on and ask a uh, surfer looking a little gray today what happened everything well that's a little melodramatic things are much worse than I thought they were when I arrived here you're not your disability all right I, 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 I make jazz hands. And <laughs> nothing happens. 
Wow. Uh, as you guys kind of hover above the city, uh, you note how loud the city is. Um, just people talking, having fun, doing their jobs, uh, vehicles moving by, a couple actual flying vehicles that are that are much smaller than your Quinjet, uh, stuff like that. And as you get higher and higher, heading towards the center, one of the main pillar buildings. Uh, you note that the sounds get quieter, and there's almost a dampening effect that you're starting to get close to, which you knew was a thing already. They have shields. <clears throat> a dampening effect. Um, I didn't catch that. I thought you were making fun of the fact that I speak wrong. You were saying because sound is going quieter. Aha. Um, <laughs> smart Alec. Um, and you guys get to um, one of the larger um, buildings. He puts a hand out, and several pieces of the metal wall open up and float out, and he deposits you all, and they close behind you. Um, you can see that this is a fairly nice apartment office. Um, it looks like it is a um, an office where he does a lot of work. There's a very large library as well as a fairly sophisticated computer system. And, but there is also a bed up on um, in one corner. The the whole um, it's it's the whole floor of this large building. Um, but it's obviously multi purpose. And it you are not alone. There's about fifteen to twenty other what you would assume are mutants um, ranging in ages from the um, early 70s to 5 or 6. So, really small kids, um, also. Uh, as the metal fits in place behind you, um, Lencher steps off of one of the metal plates and says, um, I'm sorry that you had to go through that. And he's speaking to you specifically, Norrin Rad. Um, question. You yes. said that I am still encased in some form of metal. So it your your body, your body looks like, um, like steel, like bio steel. So if I try and will myself to not have the skin right now, does anything happen? Nope. Okay. That is your form. It's marked to you. So you, you don't look like a member of your natural species, no. Okay. But I can breathe you, and... I'm, yeah, and, and you can push your flesh. Yeah. You, your skin's just a different color, and your eyes and stuff. One second. Okay. Uh, test, test, test. Yeah, yeah, I think that's, yeah. Uh, okay. Um, where was I? Where was I? Oh, I'm sorry. You had to go through. Um, it. She's been here for a while, and while she originally made it seem like um, she was a mutant here to help Genosha, we realized fairly early on what her true purpose was. And that was? That she was bringing the Devourer here. And as he says that, he shifts. His skin starts to fold back on itself, and you can see a green, um, like, smooth but with lines carved in um, face as it starts to shift back and patterns start changing throughout the outfit. His outfit in small um, hexes. And you can, you recognize him, um, Silver Surfer, as a scroll. Mm -hmm. um, though the rest of you haven't seen scrolls before. Um, and next to him, the 15 other people in the room also shift into these very strange looking humanoids. Um, and you can see that he is wearing some kind of high tech armor. Um, none of you are. Um, dumb folk, uh, you're pretty sure that's where his magnetism powers probably come from. 
is the high tech suit that he's wearing because none of the others, the other, most of the others are wearing um, a form of like high tech suit that may give them other abilities, but his is pretty unique. Is Lesnar still alive? Yes, yes. Um, it, this was actually his idea. Um, he was afraid that he didn't have the patience to work with her knowing what she was bringing here he did however ask that we start storing some of her energy just in case i sensed it when i was here we're hoping that you can use it i'm hoping the same because this planet is in dire peril if not Um, he, uh, nods, and, um... Uh, I don't, I don't understand one thing. <laughs> if you're <laughs> helping me, why is an armada from your people sitting just outside the solar system? Have you not seen Captain Marvel? Who's Captain Marvel? The the armada that's waiting outside the solar system um, is there to attempt to slow down the Devourer before he gets here. We made a promise to some people here several years ago that we would help protect this planet with what we could. Well, fuck. All right. Uh, fudge. I mean. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Plot surprise is so good it makes him break the code. Yep, pretty much. <laughs> Alright, well, uh, the first thing I will ask is, does this city have, uh, we know it's got Quinjets, that were from Wakanda, does it have one of the communication devices to talk to Wakanda as well? Oh, I don't know why I'm doing that. Uh, also, you, does it totally so, have one of our good friends on the inside working with you at this moment that can join us? They do, actually. I was going to get to that in a second. Um, they do have a communication device, and you you actually asked that. Um, it's been a while, but you asked that last time. Oh. They had, they did have a a copy of the holographic device. It's just you couldn't reach it because of the shield. Okay, so job number one is to tell Wakanda why the scrolls are there. Okay. So that the planet doesn't try and take them out, or figure <laughs> ways to take them out. I like how you like you 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 agree with him in like the first twenty seconds after he's like, I'll give you some powers. If you take a hit of this, <laughs> you're like, yeah, you these know, guys are great. Hey, call off the, the defense. You these know, guys that, are awesome. They're going to give me some drugs. I mean, give me some power happenstance back. Because <laughs> the GM specifically, or, or I should say, my understanding of the universe that the GM has laid out made the scrolls out to be more like their 616 counterparts rather than the MCU counterparts. <laughs> On purpose. On because purpose. you know. No, it's all good. You don't you you know. Power, I mean, power's back. It's fine. So, just for for anybody out there and for the people around the table, um, <laughs> Mark is the person who got me back into comic books. So, he and I have had many, many conversations over the years and read many, many of the same books. Doing a game like this is not easy with Mark. <laughs> so, I, I, I have to try to kind of That's throw some fair. curveballs yeah, at him. No, it's, yeah, no, it's totally fair. And and I don't mind because you know I still <laughs> killed two weeks of your your storyline. Yeah, so I, you I really you I really did. I feel bad about you, it. Actually. You shouldn't. Um, so I'm gonna jump in the hole. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't quite that no, because I, I I didn't do it intentionally. I just was thought that's what you wanted us to do. Exactly. Um, I'm gonna so, sacrifice my body so, so I can fight so, the big baddie. So just so I know, I'm alive in two weeks, right? Yeah. 
Okay, I jump in the hole. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, that was that was on purpose. That was um, okay, on purpose. so he, he says, um, I do have another piece of information. Um, we weren't sure if he was with you, but uh, we've done some research, and um, it appears that somebody came with another group of students right after you arrived, and they go back into back behind a wall, and you can see several... Um, almost like cryo chambers, and you can see four individuals in the cryo chamber. Um, one is Cadis, who looks peaceful but pissed. Um, yeah, that guy and then peaceful. Three, three more are students that you know that um, were on the fence about coming here, mm-hmm. and obviously they changed their mind because they're in the cryo chamber as well. So I detected some of the cosmic energy powering the monorails. So we tried to make the power that we were that she was donating um, useful in different different areas of the town, so that it would appear that that's what we were using it for. Um, in the end, we saved up quite a bit um, through just different devices and different areas throughout town. Which is actually kind of dangerous. A little bit. I know. I don't know that this is going to work, but we can definitely give it a shot. Um, but someone must get the message to Wakanda to disseminate amongst the world leaders that your people are not here to invade. Why would they think we're here to invade? Hmm. Because the GM lied to me. <laughs> I didn't lie to you. Yeah, kind of a little bit. Yeah. I, said, I of... said to you, it looked like an invasion force. <laughs> but I wouldn't have assumed that had I known that the scrolls were, were, you know, fugitives and almost extinct instead of the warlike armada that they, yeah. <laughs> That's okay. So no, I I tell him. I I relied I relied on your assumptions. Is yes, what I did. Yes, you did. Yes, you did. <laughs> so I say it's my fault. Um, he looks at you with a raised eyebrow, which is not something that's easy to do with those giant green eyebrows. Mm-hmm. Um, and he says, uh, "I believe the communication cylinder is um, downstairs in the lab. Um, do you wish for one of your friends here?" And you might want to unfreeze him, but we probably shouldn't be here when you do. It's not useful. It's fine. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> Serge, do you want to thaw out Cadus? I'll give it a shot. You want to bring back that douchebag? Is that not how that works? How are you? How are you? You're trying I'm to warm up the glass warm and then like yeah. heating up against the ice, right? Is that how this is gonna happen? Why do I have? Why do I have rug burns over ninety percent of my body? Indian burns. <laughs> Who did this to me? <laughs> Just on his face. The Miyagi technique works all the time. <laughs> um. Okay, uh, they they show you, uh, you how to give me a hand. Uh, uh, they show you how to do the procedure, how to like unlock it tech wise. Um, do you have technology, Serge? The skill? I believe so. Let's see here. Did this get? No. It got closed. Let's reopen that bad boy. Here we go. And what'd you get? A five. five. Uh, yeah. Um, Computers exist. You're not entirely sure how or what they're talking about. 
um, or how it works. Um, they one one elects to stay with you and help you and kind of you can see their body their their flesh kind of folding again, and they become a human male in his early twenties, um, in a lab coat, and the others leave the room. Um, if you'll please come with us, they say to Norrin Rad, um, the steely Avenger. Um, we'll show you the. We'll show you where the communication cylinder is. I'll go with them, and um, I will transmit a message to um, the Black Panther and say uh, the scrolls are here to help. The assessment was wrong. Uh, Galactus, the devourer of worlds, is on his way. The Scroll Armada is there to slow him down when he gets here. And we have very limited time. That's okay. if, if it's a voicemail. If I actually that's, talk to it's them. A, it's, a vo it's a voicemail. Yeah, I figured that would um, be But that's a, that's a heck of a message to send. <laughs> yep, sure is. Hi. Hi, Mi my bad. Miss you. Oh, Your world's about to end. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Why are you looking at YouTube? I'm I'm not. I lost the roll twenty tab, and I'm trying to find it, and I can't find uh -huh. it. So I just have to. Uh -huh. That's the story there, Mark. I'm looking at cat videos. Uh, okay. Um, they you send a message, and it shows as received. Wow. Um, and they say. Um, our, the laboratory we're using to funnel some of that cosmic energy is actually several basement levels down, if you'd like to come with us. I go with them. Okay, um, Surge, give me another roll with a plus four, another technology roll with a plus four. Oh, they bring out the Apple interface. <laughs> yeah. They're rolling out a cart. It's got a Commodore 13. 64 on it. Hey! That, that'll work. It takes a little while, but you're able to punch up codes and bring up um, all of the numbers, and you're able to you start the process on all of the cylinders. Cadis, um, do you have any questions about what occurred before this game? I forgot to ask you earlier. Yeah, what froze me? Okay, so I will get to that. Um, I meant, like, prior to that. <laughs> Silly. No, I think I got the gist of it. Okay. Um, at, when you arrived here, um, it was, they they thought it was a little suspect or strange that you had arrived maybe five hours or six hours after they did without them knowing that there was a second ship coming. Um, so there was a group of um, what looked like green-skinned mutants or aliens uh, that set upon you very, very fast and sedated you. And now you're waking up and you're looking out of a piece of glass at Surge. Do I feel like I have been probed in any way, shape, or form? Uh, give me a perception check. Uh, uh, 19? Oh, yeah. Um, you note that the inside of your el of your left elbow, like your the crook of your arm, is a little sore. Um, and you look down and you've got uh, tubes running out of the that area of your arm. It looks like they're putting some kind of liquid into you. Um, saline, possibly probably drugs but um other than that you don't seem to have they don't seem to have um messed with you 
I will uh, pull it out, charge it, and just kind of throw it. So you're in a lot. <laughs> <laughs> That's not a good idea. Charge stab. Um. That's fine. If you want to blow out, I I was assuming you were gonna blow out the front of the cell, and that's a fine way to do it. So, <coughs> uh, as you more, as more as just to see if my powers are still there, and if they are, how potent they are. <laughs> um, the uh, surge as you are moving on from K to the students, which you do recognize. Um, you move like you're going back and forth really fast applying all the controls, and then there's a uh, crack, a hiss, and the front of Cadus's, um container explodes and smashes into the wall behind you. And I think to myself, what a wonderful day. No, um... <laughs> oh, so that's why they wanted us out of here. <laughs> uh, your powers seem to be working fine, Cadus. As soon as I see those green skin little douches, and you don't fun, I'm going to yeah. have. There's none. There's none in here. Um, but you do see the three students are waking up from a very similar situation. Um, you were supposed to bring them out to Genosha, uh, just like the original group was, because Genosha is like a utopia for mutants and has, um kind of better facilities to handle mutants that are both too dangerous or um, ones that look like have the actual physical features that make them stand out too much that they would be in danger you know what I mean yeah so if I'm seeing uh, the rest of the students in their cages I go to each one charge the locks to kind of destroy them and release them <laughs> So Surge was in the middle of doing that. You're just gonna skip past him and just explode the. He's taking too long. <laughs> we got places to be, and Green needs to find. Surge, as you are going through the careful process of opening up these containers, they start to explode around you. You're obviously easy to move out of the way in time because you do things at super speed. Um, but the kids all kind of wake up groggy. Dead, um, dead. And and holding their heads because of the huge explosion that just occurred around them. I don't think I pressed a button that caused that. Although his cage did explode, so. Surge, it's like you never knew me, man. Slow and finesse isn't my style. So where are these greenies at? He's talking to you, Serge. Yeah, I'm kind of like greenies. Yeah, you know the green dudes about yay high, little scrawny. Yeah, they, they live on kind of fast. With Martin. You mean Marvin? Guy, yeah, he 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 knows about this stuff. What were you on? What was I on? I don't know. They jumped me and they put this clear stuff in my arm. I don't know what it is. Well, we've got the doctor who can help you. I hate doctors. Not all of them are fans of you either, son. Says the 20-something-year-old doctor that is now checking out the children and checking, like, making sure that you guys aren't bleeding and... Fine, just make it quick. Um, he does the normal check and uh, makes sure that you guys are good to go. Uh, carefully removes the needles from the um, children's arms um, and uh, makes sure that they're okay. Sees the blood running from yours and attempts to put a like a bandage there. Are you gonna let him? Make sure it's tight. 
He puts a Hello Kitty sticker there. That should be <laughs> tight enough. <laughs> I look at him. It's pretty tight. Hand charging a little bit. <laughs> Son. Don't do this. <laughs> I've had a very, very bad morning. Welcome to Genosha. He says with a smile and wraps the the area with like that special tape. The the blood donation tape. I don't know what it's called. Well, yeah. Bandage. Got it. Yeah. Yep. Um, and it takes a step back. Um, if you would like, um, the children can actually go check in um, at the um, transit station um, where they'll be given quarters and get to meet children their own age. Yeah, that sounds like a plan. Hey, kids, go this guy. He's going to take you... Gonna take you uh, to a place where you can play some play with kids your own age. They look very groggy and nervous, but they follow your directions and follow the kid in the lab coat. Um, and he exits, goes in the elevator, and now it's just you and uh, it's just Serge and Cadis in this huge kind of lab suite. Well, I guess I uh, better go let uh, Surfer know you're up. Before you do that, <laughs> he's pretty cranky. I hate when he does that crap. And I just walk out of the door in the direction I assume he went out. He's very cranky. And I think he may have punched those kids. Wait, <laughs> I think mean, I mean, the main entrance and I told think he might have, I think he might have punched area. those kids. <laughs> Is he actually down there with wherever I am? So no, I'm because with I'm with the server. I left. I'm like, I'm not giving you these heads up. So you're not sure where they took him. So give me a second to run, Mark. You know me. I say it on the comms. You say it on the comms. Okay, well, give me a second to run, Mark. So Kate is totally hears you? Yeah, <laughs> this case is also on the comms. Um, so, uh, Surfer, um, you they're taking you down several levels. Uh, it drops pretty quickly. Um, and uh, there's about six people in the elevator with you. Um, all of them look, like I said before, the varying ages and sizes. Um, and they arrive at this basement level laboratory and you can feel the science before the doors open um it's a strange phrase but uh you can feel the humming of the uh, different types of energies and the alien kind of feeling of these different things that they've been experimenting with you can see that they have several different kinds of alien um technology that they have been messing with and working on and experimenting with um Surprisingly, very little of it is actually scroll. Um, they have a lot of Chitari and a lot of just different alien tech that they've picked up from somewhere. Uh, but they lead you back, and you know immediately where they're leading you before um, before they start taking you down that direction. You can feel it. If you had hair, I would say the hair on your arms and the back of your neck is standing up, but it's more like just a tingle that's leading you towards a large source of the power cosmic. Um, they go through these stacks. Um, which would... Give me one second. I'm pretty sure this is not going to end well. Because technically she shouldn't have been able to pull the power, power cosmic from me in the first place. So I don't know that I'm going to be able to get the power cosmic back. Go ahead. I have no idea what you're talking about. Mm-hmm. 
If only we had the powers of plot and somebody could donate $10 to give you your power back. <laughs> I had someone ask earlier if I donate $10, can he not use the power? Can he not get it? That's fine. <laughs> that's her um, for month. There's a, there's a plot. There's a plot piece. No, it wasn't Naomi. Oh. <laughs> Naomi would be more like, hey, if I can I use my donate to make them all ducks? What? Yeah, I want them all to be ducks. <laughs> it's, it's not all it's quacked up to be. It's not all it's quacked up to be. Uh, okay, anyway. Uh, they lead you back down these stacks. So it's yeah, tall it's equipment. Uh, it's tall equipment um, that you're walking through, uh, and you can feel the power surging off to the right. And as they turn the corner, there's a flashing, bubbling light coming from a small circle in a large cylinder. The so small circle is boiling with these white and black dots that seem to float off of this small window. Uh, you can see that placed just to the side of it is a chair. Um, it's a Almost a throne, really. It's a, a very large metal piece with metallic straps around the feet and ankles. Um, and it, it looks like probably how they were pulling power from her. Possibly, maybe that they were using it to experiment with the cosmic power as well. So... Can we say this is when I hear Justin? Yeah, so, sure. This is where I hear Sir. Yep. Yep. Um, I, I think he punched all those kids. Uh, That's what you hear. I think he punched all those kids. That would be very odd. <laughs> um, are they alright? I don't know, man. The doctor took care of him, but he's still really cranky. Well... It's Cadus. He hates Mondays. Um, it's a Thursday. He hates those too. This, and I just want to reiterate that we can talk without actually talking, right? It's subvocal, yeah. Okay, so I I do say um, I'm down twelve levels beneath that lab we were in. This might be a trap or a bad thing. I'm not sure, but if it is, if there's a chance that we can do something about this, I need to do it. So he said I'm down 12 levels, and, and I was at the 12 levels. And he said this might be a trap, and I'm like, oh. <laughs> so where are you stopping? First. Where are you stopping? Are you in the room with him when he, when he says that? When he finishes saying that? Yeah. Okay. So you're standing next to him? Yeah, and that's when he finishes okay. saying that. I'm like, oh. Should have said that first. And then I say, uh, if I signal, get me out. Same as always. And I will nod to the scroll and nod to the chair. Like, you want me to go in there? He'll nod back to you. And I will go in. We have not, we have not had very much luck with finding a host for this power. I'm hoping that since you already held this power, you'll, it'll work. I did not think what she did was possible. I don't know what will happen, but we'll find out together. And I strap myself into the, strap my feet into the chair and then put my hands under the thing and have Surge fasten the, the arm straps. Okay. Um, Cadis, where are you? I am uh, walking down hallways trying to find where everyone else is at. So Not realizing that I have my comm device since I apparently don't remember about it in my crankiness state. You can hear them. You can hear them talking. 
All right, in that case, uh, pretty much get on the little horn and say, hey, where, where, are, where are you folks at? I'm on, uh, looks like, sub-level, pick a number, nine. They're on sub-level, I think you said 13? Is that what you said, Justin? 12. 12. 12. So, hey, this is up or down? Down. Right, uh, <laughs> You've gone a few <laughs> levels. I hope you would have so, recognized <laughs> so, uh, so make my way uh, just, to the nearest stairwell and go up. He's more wandering. <laughs> he's just wandering around. Hey, kid, you got whiskey? No. Damn it. Next level. <laughs> yeah, um, like a, uh, I'll get there. We got a couple minutes here. All right. Uh, you get. They strap you in, um, and you can feel the metal closing around your wrists and your ankles, and it's actually very cruel to the touch. But you can feel the thrum of the energy as two small pins um they don't break the sur they don't break your flesh but they like are touching your flesh on the inside and outside of your ankles and both of your wrists and you can feel that that familiar hum um as one of them walks over and starts tapping into the computer you realize just too late what your problem was you were right she shouldn't have been able to take your power, but she absolutely could have locked it within you. And as the p cosmic power flushes through the chair and makes contact with your skin, you realize it's creating a feedback loop that is now passing through the power and all of the areas where this power is saved throughout the town, oh. causing it that might cause a meltdown. And that's where we're going to pause it so I can go for a bio. <laughs> so let's go five minutes. Okay. Five minutes. Will the team be able to save everybody? Will the GM give his powers back? Will the Silver Surfer still be silver? Tune in five minutes to find out. And remember, you can affect the game. At Patreon. No, they don't got to go to Patreon to affect the game. They can do that right through the Twitch feed. I know, I screwed up your outro, sorry. <laughs> Just head over to our Twitch stream at twitch.tv slash gamersledge, if you're on Mixer, because that's the only reason you wouldn't be on Twitch. And there, there's a button where you can uh, affect the game. I'm about to be the silver quadriplegic. He's going to blow my hands and legs off. I know this. It's going to happen. Kinky. I have a cool intermission thing that I never get to use. Well, hey, that means it'll be like the silver cyborg, wouldn't it? And that would be interesting if I was suddenly, like, part Deathlock. Daniel's not even saying anything yet. It's still showing his his room.
Okay. Uh, I'm at least back. I am back. Welcome back. Hey. And boom. So when you go on a break like that, does it pause everything? What do you mean? Like, if I was talking right there, would they hear me? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's just for them to know, oh, hey, it looks like he's on a break. Right, exactly. And I should okay. probably change that to say we're on a break. Because I very rarely do streams by myself anymore if I can help it. We were on a break. Man, while we're waiting for them, I know you're not a big wrestling fan, but the G1 was 19 uh, pay-per-views, 91 matches over five weeks. Round-robin tournament with 20 guys. It was amazing. Just yeah? Finished, just finished yesterday. So how do you watch that? So uh, they have their own streaming service. So I pay 10 bucks a month for it, and it gives me basically unlimited access, but not only to their current stuff, but their, like, 30-year library if I wanted that's, to do that. That's cool. It is. It is very cool. Um, and they have really good uh, uh, English announce team, so that, that makes it easier. I'm sorry, what? They have a really good English announce team. Because it's Japanese wrestling, so they dub it. Ah, uh, like yeah. yeah, they don't dub it like anime. No, no, no. that was the part. That was the part I was missing. Was yeah. that it was the Japanese wrestlers? No, no, it's Japanese. Well, it's not all Japanese wrestlers. Like right? there's Americans and uh, guys from Australia and stuff too. But, but it's the league, right? It's yeah. the Japanese league. Correct. Correct. It's That's what I was missing. Yeah. yeah, it's the largest Japanese league. But they're trying to expand into America, which is why that's so popular right now. Because it's a really good WWE alternative. Without yeah. going into specifics of who, what, when, where, and why, but to cut to also continue that email thread are we looking like we are a go for the things you were asking about so there is one thing that we are not a go for and it's the thing i was having the other guy do that has been totally taken out of the equation so everything for a minute huh do you want me to mute and then you can just ping me when the turn no off? no because no, no, when no, i say no i'm i'm only saying saying just to keep the keep things private. The things that you and I discussed yeah. are happening. Okay. I would also like to get some board games together that we can play with people who don't play board games. Yeah, I, I do have a bunch of them already, so just FYI okay. on that. Because um, I think that Justin would really enjoy doing that, like when we're back at the house, hang mm -hmm. right? Yeah. M maybe drinking some and playing some board games. Be fun. We could play some Jackbox. We, we could play some that. Jackbox. We could draw play some Jackbox. And draw we could do Jackbox and... streaming, bachelor party uh, streaming for yep. Twitch. Yep. That would be hilarious, and now it has to happen, Mark. I'm putting you on that. Murder trivia party. Or, or bachelor bachelor murder trivia party. I don't know what that means. Um, do we murder them if they're wrong? No, it's no, it's, it's one of the Jackbox. Jackbox games. It's actually really fun. So it looks like it's just going to be um, the three of us and Wes. Oh. Yeah. It might be one other guy. I haven't heard back from him yet, but it looks That's like fine. it's going to be us and Wes, which is good. I think it's going to be good to have a small a small group. Who's yeah. Wes? He is um, one of the guys that works with us down here. Um, pretty chill guy. Not really a nerdy type guy, mm -hmm. um, but... He can appreciate it, and I think that especially if, if we're drinking and playing games, I think that he'll be, it'll be, he'll be, he's one of those guys. If, he, when we loosen him up, I think he'll be, he'll be into it, yeah. Got it. That sounded really bad. It did really sound bad. <laughs> I wasn't going to say anything. I was just going to let it slide on by, and 
<laughs> when we put a few in him, he'll let us do more. So I do. I do have a question. I have an answer. Ferry, ferry building mm -hmm. Saturday morning. Yes. That, absolutely. Okay. That's that's probably the best time to go to the ferry building. Because the the only problem I have is that, well, I'll toss you offline. I'll toss you offline because there's other things and and Ray's back. Welcome back, Ray. I'm back. And I got caffeine. Yay, caffeine. Um, okay, so the, you were plugged in the machine, and it has... You can see your skin at those places where it's t where the machine is touching you. It's starting to go silver with, like, golden threads and tendrils moving up your arm. Okay, with, first, first of all, can I control this in any way, shape, or form? Yeah, give me a power check. Uh, I think that's a d20 plus the power that you're trying to use, I think. Crit success, crit success. Hmm. So, I have questions. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Many questions. So, I did have unearthly immunity. So, like, fortitude effects and all that type of stuff and it's personal permanent i don't know if that's part of this and so that would affect things that are trying to do damage to you that's not really what you're trying to do here okay so, this so is it'll be more of like your cosmic energy power so i have yep. wield cosmic forces but there's no um role attached to that no but there's a rank right um 24 power points 24 power points, but is there a rank? Okay. Or is that your rank? I think that's my rank. And this is where I'm kind of completely useless to you, because I don't know what to... Oh, and your character sheet isn't in here, and I don't have your... Um... You can... Oh, I, you probably can't read it on the stream... <laughs> Here, I'll just <coughs> I'll send it to you. Hold on. Okay. <coughs> Compose. I know everyone has my email address. <laughs> <laughs> no? Do they? Oh yeah, I guess so. <laughs> Here, hold no, on. you're fine. Okay. No, no, I I don't care. Just send me hold the email. Hold on, because I can do Wait, it like this. You mean the email that's the whitehouse.gov? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, you. you you send it to whitehouse.gov from <laughs> from me. All right, you're not seeing it now, right? No. Okay. No, you just have to make sure like you black out like these few minutes of the vod. No, I just need. Are to... you seeing it now, Mr. Krabs? <laughs> All right, so uh, Cadus, you arrive um, at the basement floor, and you can see the lights are starting to flicker. The elevator doors open about a foot. And you can hear what sounds like metal tearing and high voltage power lines. There's and also se several smells in the air, like burning ozone, burning plastic. I said I heard a snap, crackle, and pop, but I thought that was a cereal. What's going on in here? Are you going to force open the doors? The elevator doors are only open like this much. I want to kind of like sort of reach out there to see if like any static line like starts jumping around before I actually like make contact. But otherwise, yes. You reach, you reach out, and you can feel something in the air, but it's not like static electricity, and it's not hurting you. Uh, then I'm gonna like then I'm gonna start pushing the door open. While I say, I've heard a snap, crackle, and pop. What's going on in here? Your voice, you know, it echoes, but it echoes quiet versus all of the other sounds that are going on. Um, I, you, you're, you're able to force open the doors, and you look out, and you can see kind of what I described before, a bunch of different types of alien technology experiments going on. There's a lot of flashing white and black light from a um, hallway in the tall laboratory equipment down about a hundred feet um 
Marky Mark, what'd you so, get? So, um, I, I guess, I guess what I try to do is transform myself. I have ten ranks of it. Why haven't I logged in here? I also sent my character sheet to you at uh, your R based email. Yep. 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 <laughs> So I guess I'd want to transform myself into my normal state so that I can absorb all the rest of this energy before that feedback loop tries to... Explode. Okay, so I would argue it was it would be part of the wield cosmic forces. Okay. Which you have 10 ranks and everything in that, so I would say it's a plus 10. Okay. So it's going to be a d20 plus 10. Okay. And that would be your power check. D twenty plus ten. Fifteen. Um you are able to sense this power, but you're not able to control it. Okay. So then my backup would be I'd try to transform myself. What are you what are you transforming yourself into? Uh, a stronger version of myself that absorbs all this energy. Like, I mean, yeah, literally. Like, I'm I'm gray skinned, right? Hey, druid, what wild shape do you want to take? Um, I'm gonna take the shape of a uh, something that's much, 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 much larger than me, and also has all the superpowers, and also looks like Superman, and also is immune to all damage. Okay. So that's that's in other words, I want to change into evolved me. <laughs> That, that's not <laughs> quite what I what I said. What I'm what I'm thinking is, you know, I have a internal <coughs> memory image. You know, like when, like remember when you used to know me when I when I had the store before I got fat. I still see like myself as that, part. and so I have that residual memory image of myself, and so that's what I'd be trying to transform myself into. Because I should be able to control that energy if I'm that. And you can say I can't do that, but that that's what I was trying to articulate and do, did not do a good job of it. You can say I can't do that, but in short, that's what I'm trying to do. Right. 100%. You can totally nah. say I can't do that. Yeah, man, I'll buy off on that. Done. Super Silver Surfer. D100. No, I'm I'm telling I'm telling it to do that. Oh, it's slash R space. Yep, oh, there, it there it is. Um, you as the dark gray metal flesh is turning into chrome and has these moving golden filaments just beneath the surface. Um, you're attempting to uh, you attempt to convert and transform and manipulate that power into something where you were before um and you can feel it kind of burning at the core of your of the energy you have stored um it's the same cosmic energy it comes from the same source but it's born of two different contracts um and that's you're getting some of her memories with your memories or, uh, with the power as it's kind of flooding into you um so two questions yeah number one do i think i can actually hold and retain this energy oh no okay then i am going to motion to surge to free me and then I take to... him. You're at this point, Mark. I can. The process has started. If he removes you from this, all of the cosmic energy on Genosha will explode. Oh well, don't do that then. I I, I didn't give that. If yeah. So happen. you're you're a you're a lithium battery. Right. That yeah, that's getting warm. Well, the point is, is though, if if I don't absorb all this energy and get out of here, I'm going to explode in here correct right 
So how how much more energy is there does it seem? Roughly 1,000 bits worth. <laughs> in other words, I can't evolve myself to the point where I, I can absorb all this energy so I can go, you know, super cosmic nuclear. Um, it, you, uh, you have the feeling that it is a significant amount of energy. Um, I mean, cosmic energy is just that, right? It's as powerful as plot. So it's right. So my short, if I leave, if I disconnect myself from the machine, it's going to explode regardless. If you disconnect the machine right now, it, the, the power is unstable. Um, how can I put it this way? There's, there's electricity going through. You're the conduit that's keeping now the electricity between the 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 island and the injector from it's over. You're you're an insulator right now yeah. for potential energy because cosmic energy has a bunch of different so, um, uses and okay. Um, so then I will shout, surge, shut it down. Yeah, real technology, Serge. Yeah, that didn't work out too well last time. Get them to shut it down. Uh, you come around the corner and you're seeing all of this, Cadis. Me telling him that didn't work out well. Uh, shut it down. I, I'm not that good at shutting things down. What in Sam heavens is going on in here? You walk around the corner. You see a large, um, silver-ish cylinder with a window in the front that is bubbling over with this a huge amount of white and black bubble energy, um, dot energy. You see that it is traveling up uh, towards the ceiling across wires and down into a large metal chair that has a silver surfer strapped in. You can see that at this point, he is strapped in and he has golden lines of um, almost tendrils of energy that are coming up his arm and across his chest. Um, and where they're touching, it seems like it's hurting him, but he's shrugging it off. Um, and he's yelling, shut it off! Shut it down! Alright, so I, I, re I reverse trace those wires back to like the, a central conduit and essentially dig through my overcoat, find my deck of cards, and uh, a surge... You better suck it up, man. Charge and fling one right at that conduit piece to see if I can't cause a, uh, a short in the system to turn it off. That's, that's not how <laughs> the electricity works. All right. We're committed. Uh, uh, give you a roll. <laughs> Keep in mind, this isn't electricity either. It's cosmic energy that I was just talking about. How it's volatile. I rolled on the I don't know oh. that. I'm a I'm a bodunk from Louisiana. I'm I'm gonna shut it down. That's what you're asking for. I'm gonna shut it down. I'm shutting it down. <laughs> the only way I know how. I I rolled an eleven to dodge. Uh, <laughs> so ready to hit. Oh yeah, you hit. Um, you definitely hit. Uh, there is a loud explosion as bubbling white and black energy fills the room completely. Um, and you all feel it wash over you and through you, uh, including the other, what you now notice, green skins who are standing in this room. Um, the, the cosmic energy spills out and over everything in the room, everything, all of the alien experiments, you guys, the aliens, and everything, um, and you, uh, you... We, uh, don't die? <laughs> You um you open your eyes and you're um all of you well no you two 
Cadis and Surge open your eyes and you're staring up at a light blue sky with no clouds. You note that you are laying in water. Um, you're floating in water. And the water is lukewarm. Like the, the temperature that you close your eyes, you'd barely be able to tell you were floating in water. Like back to tank water? Yeah. Except you're laying on your back and floating on the surface. Do I hear anything? Just the gentle, like, slapping of gentle waves on the sides of your body as Cadis moves around because you guys are about four feet away from each other. Do I see any greenies around? Nope. As a matter of fact, as you kind of look up and your body shifts, you, you feel that the ground, there's hard ground, maybe three feet, four feet below the surface. And you don't see anything except liquid and sky going out as far as the eye can see. And Surge, who's also laying in the water. Well, Surge, I hope you can swim. Which way? Oh, I can, I can swim and run. Um, but uh, I'm going to do some exploring. So while I do that, if you can go ahead and buckle up. Uh, consider myself buckled. And I pick a direction and run. Did you pick him up or did you just cause waves to... <laughs> you are thrown backwards um, as the, for the water splits and parts behind him like a jet splash, like a jet wave. Hot damn, what a rush! Someone might be okay. a little mad that they got, you know, sent in this direction because some cars decided to explode into, uh... Hey, man, Silver said turn it off. I turned it off. I don't know. I have no clue where we are, how we got here, but I know that thing's off. You are laying in rubble, Silver Surfer. Um, a giant hole of rubble. So I, I be, before that happens, as this is washing over, I'd like to see if I can do something. If I can't, that's totally fine. Okay. But any excess power that was coming through, as soon as I felt it go weird, like it was going to be an explosion or whatever, because I assume I would have felt a di you know a disturbance in the force, so to speak, from whatever was happening. If I still have access to all that excess energy, I'd like to heal in all, you know, my 30-foot radius as much as humanly possible. So hopefully these people don't all die whenever there is an explosion. Okay, you're able to force some of the energy, potential energy flowing into, like, mass wave of not death. Yeah. Um, and you... As you wake up in rubble, like a giant, as if a meteor had struck, there's just concrete and glass and metal and steel all around you. Um, you see that the six scroll who came with you are laying splayed out around you. Their clothing torn to shreds, the armor that they were wearing torn to shreds. But other than that, they look, they're laying there and they look reasonably fine. You note that there are other people laying around you, possibly people that were in the building above you and the buildings around you, also lying there in scraps of fabric, but seemingly perfectly fine. It looks like a very large bomb went off, and the area around you is still burning, kind of. I look at the back of my hand. The, you still see the golden tendrils below the surface. But it's... it's, it's Silver. Mine, mine too, yep. okay. Yep. Uh, so... I'm going to try to... Can I... Control the second contract power? Nope. Okay. But it has, and I'll talk to you about this offline, but it has changed some of your things and given you some other things. Okay, that's fine. Um, yep. 
so then uh, the first thing I'm going to do is see if I can summon my board. Uh, okay, so how does that work? Does it immediately appear? If it's elsewhere, does it fly to you? I, I, can it... either, I can either have it fly to me or I can just pull it out of my body. So I guess that that would be what I would try to do. So either way, sure. Yeah, it's there. Yeah. Okay, so then I'm going to fly straight up and I'm going to try and get an idea of was this just the area we were in that was affected or did Genosha, it explode? To... Genosha is gone. Genosha so, is a mass of burning metal and concrete. There are screaming people everywhere and most of them are dead except for in a small group around you. You can see some people climbing from the rubble I'm and gonna, some just, helping yeah. others. Yep, I'm going to go start helping the people that don't have anybody to help them. But did the machine turn off? <laughs> no, is the short answer. As you guys are running, Surge... Uh, as you are running, um, and Cadis, you no longer see him. <laughs> you, it goes off as far as you can see, and he's past that point. Um, you see somebody in the water next to you, because you're running so fast that it seems like you're not running at all. Like, things are the same. The water is the same, the sky is the same, so it doesn't even seem like you're moving. And you see someone standing next to you. It kind of shocks you and surprises you and so you go to stop and slip and and you kind so of look to see if he's still next to me or if i was he, just hallucinating he is do, he's I a, do i know the person he's, is he's a younger kid probably high school age have i seen him before no. No. So, uh, where are we? Well, I know where I am. I'm not sure where you are. Well, I'm right here. A fair point, I guess? I died. I don't know what you're doing here. Did I feel anything from that tumble? No. Good, then there are self-replicating guppies. I have no idea. I, I don't pick... I'm not genderist. She asked if I picked out all male guppies to fill our guppy tank. Because one of them looks knocked up. Did you just assume it's gender? Maybe it's just fat. Um, fat shame the guppy. Yeah, that, now, fat shame now, you're, now you're fat. Now you're fat shaming him. Yeah, you jerk. Uh, okay. Um, he looks at you and says, "What were you doing before you came here?" Trying not to die. Interesting. I think you feel at that. I I didn't want to fail either, he says, looking at you. It happens, though. So, am I here perpetually, or is there a way out? Well, we've been here for a long time. A very long time. And you start seeing faces appearing underneath the water. Like, you're sure that the bottom of the surface is only a certain distance, but you can see faces start to appear up. And you do as well, Cadis. In the middle of nothingness that you're in right now, you start to see faces appearing from the water underneath you. So have you been here for about 15 years? Uh, I'm... The sun doesn't change... None of our watches work. I have no idea. It just feels like a really long... 
So you were here, you were there, and now you're here in a snap. Though, I mean, it was really fast, kind of. You know what took you out? No. And you can see him look up at you with kind of like puppy dog eyes. And he starts to, like, starts to become ash and fade away. Yeah. Well, I think I found him. Um, Silver Surfer, you are helping move large blocks. Um, but something is wrong. Like, your <clears throat> things you're attempting aren't always working. Um, you're using your muscles a lot because your powers aren't working the way they should. And uh, in the beginning, you equated it to the fact that you had your powers, then you had lessening powers, then you had no powers, then you had, you equated it to that, and you're starting to think that it's a bigger issue. Um, and you soon, give me a perception check. Silver Surfer. Perception is on the second page. Perception plus nine. Plus nine. Perception plus nine. Slash R one D twenty plus nine. Twenty three. Um okay. Uh you note that you're seeing some of the same faces. As you're rescuing people, it's not really obvious, but it's like you're rescuing the same 30 or 40 people over and over and over. So... And you also note that as you've been working with all of the ash and the fire and the smoke in the air, mm -hmm. slowly the, the landscape has been changing from Genosha to your home planet. You didn't notice because the wreckage is wreckage and the people are people. Um, w when I rescue the one I'm working on, um, I will go to, I will take them to where I've been taking the other people that seems to be in a safe area and I will ask one of them, where am I? They look at you with confusion, and in your um, home language, one of them says, Zen La. And they look up, and as you follow their gaze, you can see a gigantic form hovering over the edge of the horizon um, a form so immense that it's beyond measurement it blocks out the sun um, it's so immense it's nearly impossible to believe that something that size could even be relatively humanoid shape going back to you guys in the um, shallow water face graveyard area you start feeling grasping at your feet. And especially you, Cadis, things start pulling at your feet and you start sinking into the water. I was going to say, I'm going to reach for the... I let it happen. You guys are going to say the uh, <laughs> arm, hand, orifice, appendage, whatever it is, has, is grasping at me and try to like grip it it's it's hands and arms and lots and lots of them and it's funny that you said that Serge because it made it sound like you were like yeah I'm gonna let Katus get Katus sink I'll let it happen I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna freaking like, supercharge you know the water molecules around me so as you attempt to let your powers flow into the liquid around you you see that they dissipate into the water as you attempt to grab hold of anything, 
um, clothing, even even your own things you're, you are wearing, items in your pockets, you see that the energy... And that's why I'm like, oh, crap. So this is how it ends. <laughs> <laughs> you start, start kicking and, and start kicking and banging like a little... <laughs> <laughs> you start struggling and fighting against it, and you you get about chest deep and you start thinking that this is really the end because it's so you can't it's so much you can't fight against it um as you see the arms kind of reaching out above you now and pushing you down so that to where you are almost beneath the surface and that's the same thing for you Serge. going back to silver surfer um what do you do what are your actions Um, I will jump on my board and fly straight towards Galactus. You move to jump to jump on your board, and as you go to pull it from you, nothing happens. And you see out of the corner of your eye a flash over that looks like you, but without the golden tendrils. Mm -hmm. Fly out of the corner of your eye and fly up towards the shadowy form above and there's a brilliant bright light that flashes um blind like not blinding you but you know what i mean like creating that after image mm -hmm. in the in the sky um and all three of you uh, and cadis and and um and surge you start choking in on the water and you feel your you feel like the vision starts to fade, like how my camera is doing it, stupid camera. Um, and you, all three of you, wake up with a start. Um, you're laying on the floor of the building in Genosha, breathing heavily. There are six other individuals also laying on the ground around you. The cosmic energy cylinder um, is dark. You note that the cabling above it that was attaching it to the chair has been destroyed, and the energy is no longer there, um, being stored or otherwise. There's actually no lights down here at all, except for the flickering different energy lights coming from the alien, experience, alien experiments around the corner. So you guys are getting, like, flashes off of that. Um, and you note that while you three are kind of groggy and sitting up, um, the other six individuals who are wearing armor and are all green-skinned aliens, um, they are still lying motion. And that's where we're going to stop it for tonight. I'm so going to rice crispy all the aliens. I heard everyone talking at once. <laughs> what are you saying, Ray? I said I am so going to rice crispy those greenies. Oh, that's a good thing, right? Rice Krispies are awesome. Uh, Justin? Yes. I was saying, well, that's what we get for missing the great cosmic powers. Without great cosmic responsibilities? Oh, we had the responsibility. We just didn't do use it. <laughs> so, All right. for future reference, you tell me to turn something off. I am going to turn something off the only way I know how. Is your name Surge? So, um, <laughs> we are going to we're going to work um, some character advancement, but we're going to be doing it a little bit different. Okay, so at some point between in the next two weeks, get with me over Messenger or email or something, and we'll talk about what you would like to increase on your character, and we'll talk about your reasoning behind it, and we'll see what we can do, and then you can make changes. You can. Uh, adjust your character sheets as it is. Instead of giving you PowerPoints that you have to spend in certain ways, we're going to narratively add stuff to your character. Cool? Um, I hope you had fun. Uh, everybody out there, if you have any questions or notes you'd like to add, you know you can add stuff to our stuff in bits. Um, if, you, if you think of something during one of Gamers Ledge's other podcasts, I'm sure that Mark was, would love to write it down and transfer it over just the same. Um, if you want to add bits during the week or in the two-week hiatus and say what you want to add, feel free. Um, 
those kind of add-ins are uh, always welcome. Um, we're going to be adding in some different and new things specifically for this game in a little bit, like maybe able to naming an NPC or um, having a... I'm not saying this is going to happen, but having a possible cosmic hiccup now that there's a bunch of extra cosmic energy that may or may not be in certain NPCs or PCs. Um, just things to think of. Um, I think that's it on my end, you guys. And I think that's it for us. Um, as always, if you'd like to support us um, on Twitch, you can click that subscribe button like Mr. J and I did at the beginning of the podcast because he's a rock star. Uh, or if you're a mixer, you can head over to our Patreon page at patreon.com slash gamersledge, where for as little as a dollar a month, you get your name on every show that we do, just like these fine folks that you'll see here in a moment. Um, and tune in next week, when our, or in two weeks, when our adventurers go and try to find Professor Xavier. We'll <laughs> serve to get new powers. <laughs> Will accuracy ever come to Ray? Will the server surfer still be silver? <laughs> Next week. In two weeks. In two weeks. <laughs> on Gamer's Ledge. Come on. For Ray, for Daniel, for... Uh, Justin? <laughs> for our magic voiceover man, Justin. <laughs> next, next time, thanks for watching and game on. Game on. Game on. And game on. <laughs>